I've become quite the collector of antique fire extinguishers over the past couple years, so I thought I'd share what I've collected thus far. The first one I got was this little pyrene fire extinguisher made by the pyrene manufacturing company in Toronto, Canada. This was the beginning of me developing this hobby. I was on Ragbri in 2022 and stopped at an antique store early in the tour. Ragbri is Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa. It's the oldest and longest bicycle tour in the world. I ride self-contained because I not only love the challenge, but it's also more convenient for picking up souvenirs on my journey. This fire extinguisher called to me, despite it being only the second day. I ended up carrying this for the rest of the trip. Also, it's full. The next two little extinguishers I got from a neighbor who is moving out of her home. These were stored in a basement cabinet with a whole bunch of other containers from the 1950s and 60s. The Hero fire extinguisher is empty, but was never opened. Likely corrosion leaked based on how the bottom seam looks. It was made by the Boswick Laboratories in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The other is a spray lawn made by Strobel Products Company out of Louisville, Kentucky. This one is full and still has a plastic cap on it. These two I was recently gifted by a good friend in South Dakota. They are dry chemical fire extinguishers. They are both unused and a bit beat up. One is made by the Aetna Fire Appliance Company. There are three cities listed. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Illinois, and Lincoln, Nebraska. I would assume this one was made in Lincoln because the bottom says H.L. Burt, Manager, Western Territory, Lincoln, Nebraska. I like how the bottom also says Agents Wanted. The other is a Liberty Fire Extinguisher made by Liberty Manufacturing in Chicago, Illinois. These three light bulb looking things are red comets. They used to be very common household fire extinguishers in the early 1900s. They are stored very delicately because they are glass filled with carbon tetrachloride. Although inert in their present state, if they broke, it would be a potentially dangerous situation. I am working on building a display case with plexiglass, so no harm comes to these and they don't have to be in this box anymore. It's hard to say if my dry tube extinguishers or these are my oldest fire extinguishers. The next one I have is a Diener made by the G.O.W. Diener Manufacturing Company out of Chicago, Illinois. My husband bought this for my birthday, and I have this very special little dude who hangs out on it that I got at the Spam Museum while with some friends. I really like how the riveting looks on this extinguisher. Something about copper work just looks so appealing. This is a Belmont made by Butler Brothers. I can't find much about this brand, so I don't know where they were made but this extinguisher is copper and brass. It looks like the bottom piece is metal spun, which adds more personality to what would be a generic fire extinguisher. This one, because of the odd scuffing on the plates, I plan to use it to be my first restoration project. The next two I have are both firefighters, made in Dayton, Ohio. The handheld one is likely my newest one as it has an inspection tag that dates it to 1991. The larger one is pretty neat because it's made with a solid copper tube. There are no rivets or weld seams that I can find. This one is an Elfco, or the American La France Fomite Company, out of Elmira, New York. This is probably the newest large fire extinguisher I have, seeing as it's not only stainless, but also it is resistant seam welded. All the others I have are riveted except for the firefighter. Sadly, this one has been gutted with a hole drilled through the bottom and top of the extinguisher. Not worth anything besides making it a piece of decorative art, such as a lamp. The last two extinguishers I have are my favorites. They are Elkhart's, made in Elkhart, Indiana. Both are nickel-plated. The newer Elkhart has the plate taped on. I don't doubt its authenticity, but I need to figure out how to properly reattach the plate without damaging the value. It's interesting to see how their elk design changed to be more simplistic with time, but I very much love their older design, probably the most artistic detail put into a logo for a fire extinguisher. Plus, I love deer, so I'm definitely biased. The older elk cart was likely stored on a cart or a truck based on the side pieces. It's my heaviest fire extinguisher, but it also still has some liquid in it. Because I'm still new to this hobby, I don't know much about fire extinguishers yet. But each one has its own unique flourish in their manufacture and labeling, 
So I definitely appreciate that. If you have any pointers on restoration or information on the companies, let me know. Also, like and subscribe for more content. I'm currently working on some foundry related videos and a video about the carry hard power hammer. So if these are of interest to you, stay tuned.